nowhere, literally. Uh, I came from Fudantu. Uh, I was the KDE maintainer over there. And we came over to Open Sousa as part of the Cloverleaf project, where we were intending to create an Open Sousa based distribution. And our developer support kind of fell apart. And we found a number of the folks in Open Sousa's community that were pretty supportive. So we decided to just contribute directly instead of working uh, with Open Sousa as an upstream. Um, I am a current member of the Open Sousa KDE team. And I'm maintainer for a couple of packages. I contribute to Window Maker. You can all laugh now. But that's where I come from. Um, Fuduntu was a very end user focused distribution while it, while it existed. So that's kind of where my development focus is at is on end user experience. So that's, that's where this bodega thing comes from really. Um, Okay, so when I said I live in the middle of nowhere, that's where I live. It's three and a half hours from my house to anything even resembling civilization. Yes, that green truck is mine. Just thought I'd give you guys a picture of how I define middle of nowhere. Okay, so what is Bodega? Um, this actually comes from Aaron Siego uh, with the KDE team who wrote the original program. Uh, it's a cross-platform app for digital stuff. Uh, in fancy words, it creates a catalog of metadata which represents digital assets. Digital assets can be anything. Uh, they can be pulling uh, applications from, the, from your package manager in the official repositories, could be pulling music from somewhere, movies, books, whatever. Uh, Bodega is not tied into any particular data source. So I kind of wanted to look a little bit at some of the history of app stores. Um, you know, the, the one that everybody is most familiar with uh, is the Apple ecosystem. They kind of started that when they released the iPhone uh, through iTunes and through the store on the phone itself. And Google quickly followed with the Android and Windows uh, slash Microsoft also did. You know, everybody knows the uh, the Google or the Apple store on their mobile platform. Uh, Google obviously has theirs. It was originally branded as the Android store. It morphed into the Google Play store after Chrome OS came around and the Chrome web browser. They've kind of folded a bunch of stuff into it. The Windows Phone also has a application store just like anything else. So what's happened is a lot of end users have become used to this paradigm of having an app store where they go to get all of their applications and in most cases most of their media to go find things. So naturally it evolved into they've done this for their desktops as well, um, including some Linux distributions, uh, OpenSUSE not being one of them. So they bridge the gap a little bit for what the end user is expecting between their mobile experience and their desktop experience. Uh, the OS X app store, obviously anybody that runs a Mac has run into this now and then. Uh, the Google Play Store is available on the desktop as well now with the Chrome OS devices, uh, Chromebooks, etc. With uh, the release of Windows 8, Microsoft now has a store that was kind of leveraged off their technologies from the Xbox Live Marketplace. Um, Ubuntu has had a software center for a while. Um, it's actually a pretty decent software center. I spent some time looking at porting a lot of what they were doing over to OpenSUSE for an end user experience. They just tie an awful lot into Unity and I didn't feel like porting all those libs over. It's just a lot of work. And one that a lot of people don't consider is the Steam Store. It is closed source, I, agree, I get that, but it, it's an app store that makes, an, it makes it very easy for an end user to install things. Uh, so they're not having to worry about adding repositories and going and looking for things. They've just 
they've got this app and I want that game, they click on it and it installs. Theoretically. <clears throat> what? Yeah. Yeah. So the current state, uh, as of 13.1 anyway, um, and I, I'm going to refine what I've said in this first point on this slide. There is a unified application management installation interface. It's through YAST. Everybody knows that one. Um, but I've been on the forums and in the help channels on Freenode enough. A lot of end users, people that aren't technically inclined, are either intimidated by or don't understand YAST. They don't quite get it. And it's a little hard for somebody to find things in YAST at times. Um, and then we've also got some fracturing depending on the desktop environment. I'm only going to deal with uh, GNOME and KDE because of the two biggest uh, in, the, in the user base. And, you know, as always, there is Zipper, uh, which is what I personally use. I just do a direct through the command line. There's YAST. And then the one-click methods through software.opensusa.org, which works very well uh, as long as you know what you're looking for. Uh, I was going to look at a couple of different things. Um, those of you that use KDE, Apper is kind of the, the default KDE tool for installing things. Uh, it does all right. Um, it's a little hard to use if uh, you're looking at, I want to look at graphics programs. It's a little hard to break those out. The categories aren't well set. And that's not necessarily a failing of Apper as it is the categories uh, structure underneath in the repositories. Um, GNOME, I actually talked to one of the GNOME guys today because I didn't know I don't use GNOME. Um, they are recommending you use YAST. Uh, GNOME does provide a GNOME software installer, but apparently with our package kit implementation, that has got some bugs, so it's not a default install for GNOME users. And then obviously the two oldest and completely platform agnostic tools, uh, Yast and Zipper. Uh, you know, Yast, it's the eight-headed Hydra. It controls everything in the system if you want it to, which can be a good thing and can be a bad thing. Um, like I said, I, I know a lot of end user types that are confused by Yast and what it does and doesn't do, et cetera. Zipper works great uh, if you're comfortable dropping into a terminal. Uh, you know, then a lot of people aren't, or a lot of people just don't want to. Um, I don't personally understand them all that well, but there are the people that don't want to. So, you know, why, why am I looking, and the couple of guys that are working with me, at an app store? Uh, you know, for an average user, it's an easy interface to find applications, to install stuff that are compatible with their platform where they can just click and it runs. You know, it pulls it out of the repositories, everything goes. Um, and it also maintains a record of your purchases and et cetera, so you can go back and look at things. Um, not that Zipper and or Yast don't. You know, you can always uh, look at what you've got installed on your system. But what a lot of the uh, other stores do is you download something, you try it, you didn't like it, you uninstall it, it still maintains a record that you would install that at one point, so later on you can go, well, I'd like to try that again. And you've got a listing of everything that you have downloaded that's not necessarily installed, which can be handy. I use it on my Android phone a lot. Um, so why Bodega as, a, as opposed to some of these other technologies? Uh, technically, Bodega is platform agnostic. Uh, obviously, my initial focus is for OpenSUSE. There's no reason Bodega couldn't run on Arch, Fedora, Debian, uh, even on the BSDs, if, if some of the BSD guys were interested in it. Uh, right now, as written, it does leverage Package Kit. So any distribution that's got Package Kit, you could technically take what I write, install it, and you would be able to use the, use the program. Uh, the current client that I'll show you a little bit later here, uh, it is written with Plasma Active in mind. This project comes out of, the, of KDE's Plasma Active project. So it's, a, it's sort of designed with a, with a touch, inter, touch screen interface in mind, but it does work. Uh, and I do, I'll show that a little later. I've got an, inst, an installable one for everybody to check out. 
So the advantages to this is, you know, obviously the plat being platform agnostic. Um, the nice thing about Bodega, uh, even though OpenSUSE as of right now isn't set up to do this, is you can use it to provide a revenue stream. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute here. And we can also create stores for non-official repositories that give all of the proper licensing um, warnings, uh, end user agreements, uh, things like the NVIDIA and AMD drivers, um, closed source programs like Skype, uh, the Google Chrome, and the stuff that most of us are currently getting from Pac-Man, like the video and audio codecs, where it's not having to be added into uh, the official OpenSUSE repositories. You just create a store for them within Bodega that pulls from those repositories. And as I said, with the appropriate licensing warnings, that way nobody's getting in trouble for violating licensing and patents. Uh, the current state, it is in its original form. Um, I've got the link up there to the repository where it could be installed if you want to have a look at what currently exists. Uh, it's a little screwy in that the command to start it has nothing to do with Bodega, and I haven't fixed that yet. So it's actually active add-ons as part of the part of the plasma active add-ons for KDE. This is just the initial window for the client. Um, as you can see, they haven't put a whole lot of work on the active side into making it pretty yet. And I don't know how how readable it is, but it does have a couple of default stores set up. Um, There's a couple of apps in here. Uh, there's some books. They've got it tied into Google's Gutenberg project. You can download books that way. And then they've got some wallpapers, and they're currently working with a project whose name I can't remember right now to provide a lot of uh, theming and wallpaper stuff for your various desktop environments. So where am I planning on going, or are we planning on going with this? Uh, I'm actually looking when I write the front end for this to take it a little further away from package kit and work closer with the ass team and leverage libzip instead of package kit for open SUSE's purposes. Um, just because I like it better. Uh, it's going to be written a uh, pure QT client, no KDE dependencies, so no users, XFCE, window maker, whoever, whatever environment you're running. You're not going to be pulling half of KDE in with it just to run this program. And I need to get down, and I haven't done this yet, there's a server-side parser I need to write. Uh, it'll most likely be in Node.js that is going to parse all of the app data XML files and build the stores automatically. Uh, it'll just troll the repositories, uh, pull that XML in, and turn them into Bodega assets. That way, on the end user side, you don't ever have to really add repositories. The stores will be set up, and you click on it, it'll add the repositories in Yast, and you're good to go. And then, you know, items that are possible in the future that I'm not going to, uh, or we're not going to worry about right off the bat, is the monetization angle. Um, the biggest reason we're not worried about that right now is just because OpenSUSE as an organization doesn't have any way to handle money. Um, that's a board issue. I know it's been discussed ad nauseum, and uh, I've heard some rumblings that they've, they're working on something to deal with that sort of thing. But that monetization could be, um, you know, the example I use, you could set up a store through the Amazon affiliate program, uh, for buying MP3s or books or whatever, whatever whatever organization OpenSUSE has set up could be making their half a cent per transaction off of those and pay for things like travel assistance, doing these conferences, I, you know, whatever the board decides to do with it or, or organization. Um, obviously, the external repositories um, the, that were most of us that use OpenSUSE on the desktop are running. Um, I don't like Skype any better than you do, but everybody and their dog uses it. Uh, Pac-Man obviously has some of the, uh, the non-free license stuff that we all use on a regular basis. 
And then, you know, the last item would be porting to other platforms. Uh, once I get the client written, it's not going to be that big a deal to get it out there into the open, which theoretically could bring me help in from other platforms that don't have an app store set up that want to get in on it. Um, and the last slide I've got is just, um, you know, the installable previews are, in, are on OBS, and those will be updated as I go. Uh, my working source tree is on Bitbucket. I've got the URL there. And then the upstream source is on KDE's Git. Uh, it's an official KDE project that they're hammering on. So if you'd like to have a look, you're more than welcome to. And that's all I've got as far as the presentation goes. Uh, does anybody have any questions or uh, want to tell me I'm crazy or otherwise? Just a little comment. Uh, you said that uh, you are looking for expanding the client or getting help from other distributions. And on the same side, you said that you are dropping package config and going for libzip directly, which will actually be counterproductive to getting more help from the outside. Right. Uh, and that's because a package kit already works. Oh, okay. You know, so I don't need to do any development on that. I just, uh, I've, We've all run into issues with package kit here and there, and if I can tie directly into libzip for open source's purposes, it would really be nice. Okay, I might be a little bit confused. Uh, there was a application in the beginning that was KD1 Plasma thingy, yeah. right? And you are writing pure Qt QML thingy. Yeah. That's rewrite of the original application or fork of the original application, modified uh, it, or something from scratch? Uh, it's going to be working uh, partially from scratch. I'm going to use their, um, I'm actually working with the KDE guys to get this developed for the desktop because this was originally intended for their, their Plasma Active setup, which is for tablets, phones, etc. So I will be upstreaming everything I do back to the KDE guys. Uh, so it can then be ported out to wherever it needs to go. Okay, thanks. Oh, no problem. Looks, 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 looks really exciting. <laughs> Hello. Uh, did you? Where do you mean to have all those uh, repositories defined? Uh, do you mean to provide a service on your servers where you will have all, let's say, upstream repositories defined on your um, side? Then that part I am actually still working out. Uh, you know, it as it sits right now. As soon as I get that parser written, uh, that file could actually just go into the repository on OBS. Um, I need to talk to the OBS guys to see if they're okay with me adding a file, but it's going to be minimal overhead for that. It's going to be, a, you know, basically a single XML file that Bodega will look for when it's looking at a repository. So. Um, yeah, one, one thing, and I mean, this is less of a question and more of a comment, I guess, because it's something I, I understood when I talked to Aaron about this at some point, and I didn't see in your presentation so much. I mean, this, this element where um, um, Bodega can grab content from multiple locations and show it in one place, mm -hmm. right? This, this is something um, it can do. I mean, can you say more about that? Or Yeah, that's... Um, let me get back to that slide real quick. So in this view, which probably isn't really great, the picture's a little small, you would have a list of your various stores here uh, where I could break it out uh, when I do my parse of the official repositories, which is where I'm focusing to begin, where using the app data from uh, um, the XML files that are generated by OBS, you'll be able to break it out um, 
you basically create a group that's a desktop group where if you were looking for desktop software, you would click on the desktop tab and it would list software that's suitable for the desktop. You could do a server tab, you could do whatever. And you can aggregate through this um, anything you want. You could build a store for anything. If, if you're an independent software vendor and you have a product that you would like to get on here, it doesn't even have to go into the official OpenSUSE repos. If you can package it to run on OpenSUSE, you can build your own um, back end for this and Bodega will go find it. And you'll be able to provide it through this interface. Obviously. Yeah, but it can also be other things, right? I mean, he, he gave oh, an yeah. example about if you're an independent book writer, you can actually set up Bodega on your own server at home and yes. sell your book there. And then it will be available for, well, on every, you know, book, including Bodega UI, right. if they want to. So, I mean, the thing is, of course, we on the Linux platform, we have a very fragmented platform. Eh? I mean, there is there is Ubuntu and there's OpenSUSE and Fedora and Arch and, well, Monjaro and whatever yeah. else there is. And they're all different. So, if you try to sell, say, you know, a movie, if you want to sell it to Linux users, that's kind of pointless because you can't reach them all unless you go through all these Linux different distros. And this is actually a solution for that problem. Yeah. So you basically immediately grab the whole market, potentially, which makes it a lot more interesting, actually, to try and reach Linux users for content providers and even application providers, etc. Yes, and, and that's why once I get something working on OpenSUSE, I intend to look at porting to other platforms. Obviously, OpenSUSE packages from the default repositories aren't going to work on Fedora or Debian or whichever distro you want to play with. But all of the other stores you might be able to do, and anybody can create a store. It's actually very simple. There's a certain, there, uh, in the, the repository, the Git repository from KDE, there's a uh, bodega server. So if you're writing books or making music or making short films or whatever, you could tie that in, notify um, whichever main server I'm going to have it querying, which I don't have. I don't have that part decided yet, and that would make it available to anybody running the Bodega client on whichever platform. And the nice thing is that you can also have multiple UIs for it. So if you are that book writer, you can also create a store UI for your website that only shows books, because after all, your visitors are probably only interested in books, and that hides all the software and all the other stuff. So it can basically become a whole network of connected stores that all offer various things and UIs for it that all only show parts of what is available on the you know network, mm -hmm. basically. It's, it's quite a bigger thing than single vendor, single person controlled, you know, single channel thing. You have to see it as a multiple backends, multiple frontends, and then one Bodega server in the middle, which doesn't actually host the content. It doesn't have to. Eh? If you have open SUSE packages in Bodega, then his server, his Bodega server, if he would run that, doesn't host the packages. It just hosts basically XML files, basically one click install files that just grab the files from the downloaded OpenSUSE.org server. So it's really about federating all this content from all these sources into, well, different stores that are all optimized. I mean, on a GNOME desktop, you can say, well, I just want the GNOME applications. Fair enough. You can do that quite easily mm -hmm. and only show relevant applications. And if, if Fedora and Ubuntu and Debian are all in there, well, you only show what's relevant on your right. distro. So it's all based on tags, not even groups or categories, but tags. So it really is very flexible and can be anything. Yeah, which I'm sorry I left out of the presentation. <laughs> Luckily, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my. So that's all I've got on it, uh, unless uh, anybody else has any questions. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>